There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Hey guys and girls, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell. And of course you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very, very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio with a fine young man all the way across the pond by the name of Richard Harris. Richard, what is up, my brother? Well, I'm very excited to be here today, Jay. Um, we're in the middle of World War III, and there's a splitting off between two civilizations, a slave civilization and a free civilization, and we're trying to make civilization two as big and as empowered as it possibly can be. That's what's going on. That's beautifully well stated. I mean, I don't even have to ask you like what's going on in the world right now, which is what I normally do, so we're going to get right into the meat and potatoes. But let me give you guys um, Richard's bio uh, and, and just a, a bit of uh, backstory, uh, his assistant reached out to me, you know, I'm sure randomly uh, through my contact page, man, I think, bro, it was like three or four months ago. And at the time, I had just finished, uh, you know, all bo bookings for 2022, which I normally do. And of course, because I just relocated and expatriated myself to Mexico, I actually did it earlier this year because I had a lot of work to do to move down here. Um, but I was fascinated and drawn, as I said, by my higher self to check out, you know, to essentially peep his work, to cyber stalk him for a second. And I watched like two to three, maybe five minutes of his stuff. And I was like, I want this guy on. So guys, I'm telling you, man, like I rarely find people at his wavelength in this uh, bifurcated world that we're going about to talk about. So you guys are in for a super treat. So anyway, he is a life coach who cultivates the character across all domains, physical, psychological, spiritual, spiritual, environmental, He's extremely passionate about freedom, and he is, of course, an enemy of tyranny. So, Richard, it is amazing to have you here today. And as I was telling you pre-show, we're gonna. This is gonna resonate, you know, through the universe. This is gonna be a very high-powered conversation. So, uh, you just kind of said it. Before we jump into the talking points, uh, this the world has bifurcated for everyone who is conscious. Uh, you know, those that are walking around, and should really your first point about freedom and life of a sovereign. Uh, I call it, you know, empowered, sovereign, and free, right? Connected to source. And then you have the opposite of that, however you want to define it. Where do you see this plane, this earth, this dimension, you know, going to knowing that we're in a bifurcation, knowing that it's only going to most likely become stronger? Uh, how do you see things playing out, say, in the next two to five to 10 years? Well, I, I like the way you say empowered, sovereign, and free. And how did you describe the other side? What word did you use? Oh, I just said, uh, dis, uh, well, I mean, I normally said disempowered or the opposite. Yeah, so so that's it. So basically, like the other side um, can do anything they want. That's their superpower. So you can lie as much as you want. You can disrespect yourself and other people as you want. You can do anything, anything you like. But you also have to reap what you sow. Our side doesn't have that, but we have all the strength and the advantages of attuning to the higher self, which is, I think, eventually infinitely powerful. And so there's the asymmetrical warfare going on there. Like they have their advantages there and we have our advantages. What happens as the Earth energy grid, which maybe we can talk about in a bit, um, continues to accelerate, which it certainly has been doing during this uh, since before the scandemic starts, is our psyches are expanding, we're growing, our shadow material is getting smashed in our faces time after time after time. I'm sure you, you've experienced that last couple of years. I definitely have, and I'm sure our audience has as well. But as, as we in the side of freedom um, integrate ourselves and connect with that highest or higher spiritual um, uh, properties that the other side can't do, it's, it's just economics. We're, we're destined to win this thing. Um, whereas the other side, like they'll take more and more Faustian packs, they'll do more and more depraved things, darker and darker things. And in doing so in this sort of like Dr. Faustus myth, get worse and worse and worse and then eventually break themselves up. And that's where we are. Like the only question is how long will it take for that to happen? How much suffering has to take place? How much death has to take place? But I think economically, like the game's set, like you can't beat people that are empowered to, to the higher self and beyond. Like, it's too much energy for these guys. Beautifully stated. 
Where do you see, as I was telling you, you know, my wife, she's actually texting me right now in the background as I was listening to you. I thought I was opted out of WhatsApp, but she's messaging me because she's still in the States. Uh, and I, it's closed now. But uh, where do you see places like the USA and the UK and the EU? And again, these Western, you know, absolute now run by, you know, technocratic tyrannists. I mean, where do you see these places going in just the short term? Because I, you know, again, we left obviously the USA and obviously I was born in the States. I'm a world traveler, but, you know, I'm not stupid. I see what's happening. I mean, I was in the People's Republic of California, which is you know, the next most tyrannical place probably behind Canada and Australia. But obviously London and DC and New York and Los Angeles and San Francisco and, you know, all these major urban or suburban areas are next, right? Like the next, the next great event is going to cause utter chaos. Yeah. I mean, it'll be like land of the living dead, right? I mean, we, one of our points is talking about the V. We could kind of maybe even go into that in, in, in the re relative or the relativity of that aspect of things. But I mean, aren't major cities right now this close to just complete and total collapse? Yeah, of course they are. So I think like most people in our thing um, are, are, are sort of seeing that this year, 2023 is going to be about savage economic collapse, much worse yeah. than 2008, right. so Great Depression level, or maybe even worse. For sure. It's going to be more normies waking up and seeing through the scandemic what's happening to them, and then a layer or two into the sort of conspiratorial paradigm as well. Um, but then, but then like, it'll be random things. I mean, like, if you look back at the years, there's always random stuff that no one's thinking about that ends up playing a big role in it. There could be a Project Blue Beam. I mean, that might be this year, might be kicked down the road a little bit. But, that, you know, for those people that are in the know, there's a fake alien invasion that the Cabal's got planned. And so that might be this year, might be in the future. But to, to your specific point about the cities, yeah, I think they're fucked. I think they're going to get really done in. And I think like you, that, that's where the brunt of the New World Order is going to be. That's where all the horrible 5G and stuff like that right. is at most. And, and also something that's not talked about much is like that's where the mental disorder is at, at right. most. I mean, if right. you're... If you're on our side and you're getting sensitive and like you know you, you you're having all this spiritual work that you're doing if you're in a soup of people that are anxious that are depressed that are suffering from like a cast to be personality disorder or something like that so you like you're you're, you're buying coffee from a, a raging narcissist or like your your boss maybe is, is a truly a psychopath or this person here this nurse that you've met as a sadist or something then then like th that's arguably much worse than the 5g and the fluoride in the water and the other weird stuff they have in the city like being in that soup of of, of horrible psyche uh, and so so that to me is is one of the most frightening things that people in the cities are kind of getting cooked by they really are bro i mean look i'll be honest uh i mean i'm like you very heightened heightenedly sensitive attuned and in tune and knew all of this stuff but man now that i'm out of 5g living in mexico and again i'll tell everybody this you know, Richard's only the third podcast so far I've done this year, you know, as I've rebooted um, since last year, you'll be seeing podcasts that were filmed in, you know, October and September still coming from Jay Campbell because it's just the way it is, unfortunately, the way we run these things. But, uh, bro, I am so much clearer. My creativity is so much higher. Every morning I sit out in sun gaze for between 20 and 30 minutes with the infrared sun down here of the tropics. It is unreal how much better and how much more connected I am to source to creation, to reality uh, here outside of the tyrannical 5G, dirty electromagnetic grid of the United States. And again, people do not understand what it's like until you're actually outside of it, right? It's like the rat yeah. in the cage. The rat doesn't know it's out of the cage until it's truly free. And so most of the people in the States, and I would argue where you are, you know, too, in Europe and in the UK and all the westernized, you know, first world countries are literally... Like you said, they're they're being distorted mentally and spiritually from the negative energy, which is again the dark side, the parasitic forces. That's their power plant. Yeah, yeah. So maybe like for the benefit, it would be beneficial for our audience to go around this, right? Because like the fastest spiritual growth I've ever done, and just general character growth and that kind of thing, is where I get the fifty, the hundred, the two hundred basics down. I filter the water with a proper exactly. water filter that gets all the fluoride and everything out. Yep. I do sunbathing. I do my positive affirmations. I do yep. the 10 or 15 or so supplements that maybe we can talk about that because I know you're right. <laughs> sure. happy. But, you know, I've, I, we can swap notes maybe, but like I've brought it down to like these 10 or 15 are like, you know, the good ones that I need. Uh, you're doing your meditation, like you're doing your cleanses. Yes. You know, you're away from toxic relationships and stuff like that. And just, it's like the enemy is trying to put that stuff plus 500 other things that brevity prevents me listing here 
yep. to you. And yep. if you can get all that stuff good, like you're saying, the sun gazing and out of the EMF and all that kind of thing, the more of those bits you get in line, the more and more you, you kind of grow into it and this great yep. power comes out. And it's it, it, the momentum of that, when I've got that going, has been truly remarkable. So that's another way to look at the war, seeing the 5,000 ways they're poisoning us yep. and trying to get step by step, because it's overwhelming to do too many of them in one go, as many of them fixed as possible. Uh, what do you make of that? That's awesome. Well, also, I, I mean... Dude, this podcast is already awesome because we're going in different circles and stuff, and it's all profound and, and everything is interconnected. Well, for me, you know, as an author, as a guy that was just a guy, you know, who was a typical uh, American executive wage slave until he, you know, found himself at 42, um, I've been writing about that stuff that you just talked about. You know, you said it specifically 500 other ways that they're literally attempting to poison our souls, right? Because it has nothing to do with our physical bodies and we'll get there, but they are attempting to poison the spiritual awareness, connectivity, the higher self uh, as much as they can. I literally have been writing about this since 2015, you know, with my very first book talking about how to use therapeutic testosterone to fight this multi-front, multi-spectrum, you know, again, it's a full spectrum assault, yes, right, on all of us. And, you know, t testosterone being, you know, the primary sexual identification hormone for both men and women does, in a lot of ways, exert, you know, a very powerful, like, anti-effect of what they're doing. But anyway, I was writing about this in 2014, 2015, and people thought I was insane. So fast forward to now, and it's like, oh, wow. So I was actually being led by the Spirit in putting this information into the public. And now people like you and I, bro, and again, I know it doesn't matter to us because our egos are behind us. You know, we have, you know, harnessed them in. We allow them to, ex to save us in times of survival and necessity, but obviously we harness their uh, ability to cause emotion and outbursts and reaction. But it's, it's crazy because now people like us People are, you know, the, call it, you said it already, the normies, the sheeple, the NPCs, you know, I think the Lord's came and called it the backfill people. Like, you know, they're, they're looking at people like us now and they're being like, oh, yeah. maybe I should listen to that person. Well, that's, and, the year. that's 2023. Exactly. But dude, I'm, I mean, and I know you're experiencing this, but you know, I'll just share with you, like just in the last 45 days. Now, I always, again, I'm very blessed in my life, but I always get a lot, a high volume of messages from people all over the world asking for help and, you know, health optimization type stuff. The spirituality, you know, has always been kind of more fringe, but that's the only thing that, that's my jam, right? Like, I don't care about the other stuff. It's like boring to me. It literally bores me to tears, right? But I have to do it because I have to pay my bills like everybody else in the money magic well, system. Well, hang on. Let, me, let me push back on that. So like, I, I want, want to absolutely validate the biohacking, the peptides, the fasting, sure. the cleansing, the training sure. and stuff. Remember, not everyone has that built out. And actually, I think those are the first steps you want to take in. Um, like positive psychology, something you might read out of a Western university textbook is fantastic, right? Sure. But I think to put nuance on what I believe you're saying there is like, once you have that built out and then you just keep optimizing it, the real action is is the spirituality yes. and the biggest action of all is when you go deeper into the inner planes because then you have most, exactly. most impact but i, I want to validate that stuff like well thank like, you definitely, definitely still do that get it to 11 out of 10 just put it put it with the spiritual stuff and i and i think the frustration perhaps you're feeling is like is, is that's the thing that's challenging the most and that's the stuff you're like get it one day don't get it the next day like 20 percent get that but i know it's right, right. Yeah. Right. Whereas like the fasting or the, or the peptides is, is easy. It's like, yeah, I got that. I can write no, you, you got me, dude. You got me. I mean, really what I was exactly. And thank you for validating that. I, what I was really attempting to get to and didn't do that good of a job of getting there, but we're on that now is like, dude, in the last 45 days, the messages that are coming across to me about spirituality. Yeah. About like, I mean, this is the perfect one. I, sh I wish I had this open and I would play this right now, but somebody left a message to, on the other day on my Instagram that was like, I took a screenshot of it, but my desktop is too cl clouded right now. And this is too good of a conversation that said, I came for the peptides and I got blown away understanding about my higher self. That's I swear to God, it was unbelievable. I mean, it was like, wow. Right. So that's what I'm attempting to do. But thankfully for guys like you and me, more people are becoming attuned to this awareness. And I want to say something that you said earlier. And again, this is why you're on my show because very few people say this. 
there is a cosmos effect on this planet right now. There is an energy coming from what I would call, and I'm sure you agree with me, the spiritual central sun that is affecting people's latent DNA on this planet right now. And if you are somewhat conscious, somewhat awake, you know, somewhere above the line of integrity on the consciousness scale, you feel this. And Richard, I'm sure in the last two or three weeks, I don't have to ask you because I already know, there's been nights where you probably just woke up in the middle and I say, what is going on on this planet? Like my wife is very conscious, thank God too. And we woke up together in the last two weeks looking at each other at 3.45 in the morning saying, can you sleep? And I'm like, no, I can't sleep. So you said it, the energy is profoundly changing consciousness on this planet right now or plane or whatever this is, this dimension. And for people who are awake and again, somewhat attuned to it, they're like, wow. And so they're coming to people that are, you know, like us out there kind of at the forefront leading by example and asking for more. And I think it's the most amazing thing ever. And bro, a year and a half ago, you and I both know it wasn't like that. People were in deathly fear of the V and fear of the C and fear of every other tyranny that was going on in this planet. So it seems like it's shifting somewhat, at least enough that, you know, the people in resonance can resonate with the things that we're talking. I know there's still the other side and, you know, they're growing in numbers too, but I don't know. I just haven't seen it like this in the last 45 days. It's just, again, my personal opinion. Maybe it's also because I'm down in Mexico and I'm clearer, but what do you think about that? Well, I, I agree to every single thing that you've said there. And I think like you're getting right to the bottom of, of, of what this war is about when you start talking about the Earth energy grid and like the g galactic central sun. Is that what yeah. you're talking about? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, all that stuff. Because what what if you're familiar with those energy lines, right? And basically, if you get a, any sacred site, like small or yeah, they're big, all like, lay, lay, lay energy grids. Yep. Got yeah, it. to put some nuance on that, the, the ley lines is actually the just for our audience is 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 the roads that connect like these sacred sites, right? That's a ley line. Uh, the the earth energy lines are these lines that will loop and weave, weave around so exactly. that the cathedrals and holy wells were made along that line. So the, so the earth energy lines. But so so um but but if you live on one of these lines, like it will amplify your psyche. And if you live on a big one, it will very much amplify your psyche. And if you if you live on a node, like all sorts of really weird spiritual stuff happens, and actually you shouldn't you shouldn't live on a node. It, it would be a bit mental. Um, so so that whole grid it has been growing since 2017. Like a lot of people don't know that like the the lines in 2017 doubled in size, and the harmony times, which happens four times a year, the day before the solstice and the equinox, when at the nodes like the the lines come into harmony. Um, the Templars actually wrote a lot about that because they were well into their sacred sites. So if you understand this earth energy stuff and you understand the Templars, or if you know people that are dowsing and you douse these big major energy lines, you will find loads of random Templar things. And I know I'm, I'm, I'm very privileged to know a master dowser here in the UK and he, he's good enough to remote dows. So he's going across the Sahara desert, finds a big node, looks it up on Google Earth. What does he find? An old Templar fort that no one even knows exists. You know, So, so they were on it, these guys. But they but they 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 come into harmony four times a year and what happened since 2017 is the harmony time which was one day went a bit longer and been a longer the one that just happened recently i think was like 16 17 days or something and in 2024 it's going to be in year-round harmony so i don't think that's the foundation of the story but i think not far away from the foundation the stuff you're talking about there with the energy lines and the galactic sun which is connected to all this stuff and the, and, and the way that that's changing consciousness and the way that you were talking there is a story and i think because a lot of people initiated into this conspiracy thing jay they um they, they thought hang on a minute this is supposed to be for 2050 the scandemic that is and then it's like they brought it back to 2030 and then they were caught off guard and it's like no we're going to do it in 20 2020 and there's a talk about them doing it bef before they wanted to and i think this is why i think they weren't ready for the earth energy stuff and had they not done that stuff then this awakening would have happened without team evil like trying to pin everyone down with all their malfeasance I love Team Evil. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. Okay, so something you just said, you probably are not even aware of this, but yeah, see, it's all funny how like people like us and our conscious awareness, we're all kind of in the same vein of understanding and awareness and it, nobody, at least that I've been able to come into yet can like over arc everything. But as you know, everything is connected. 
There is a company out there called uh, Focus Life Force Energy. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but the two owners are you know, super high level descendants or disciples of Dr. David Hawkins before he died. And they created this company and basically their technology is they, 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 uh, they send in resonant harmony, coherent waves into your home, through your cell phone, through your Wi-Fi, through your routers to keep your, you know, property or your, uh, you know, your little, uh, ecosystem with your arc field within five feet, if it's on your cell phone, you know, in harmony at all times. So anyway, I've been using their tech for like six or seven years. You know, is it, really working? I don't know, right? Do I, you know, placebo uh, assume that it does? And do I manifest that reality? Of course. And so there's a combination of both. But at the end of the day, I did a podcast with these guys about a year and a half ago. And honestly, Richard, it blew my mind. Really? They told me this, and this will, you'll, you'll use this in your presentations, in your conversations. In 2019, in September, the earth's frequency as a collective consciousness was at 200 and 44 points, which 250 on the consciousness scale is neutrality, which really means the end of the matrix. Yeah, because I remember because I'm familiar with David Hawkins and I like him. And, and when he was writing his books, I think it was just into pride, wasn't it? And we needed to nudge it over the victory line a bit. Yes. So 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 literally the entire consciousness structure of this plan. I'm gonna give you a story, it's gonna blow your mind out how relevant this is, was this close the matrix to ending, but none of us knew that. Okay. This was literally in September of 2019. And then of course we all found out, you know, the Wuhan scamdemic was released in the military Olympics and it went back and then everybody got sick. And then they hit us with all the, you know, the real bioweapon, which is the V, which we can get into. But at the end of the day, I had just come back. This is how relevant this was from Peru. My first trip to Peru, two weeks. And in the time that I was in Peru, I was molecularly altered. I mean, I'd always been a seeker. But it was at this point that I decided that I was coming back and that I was switching who I was as an influencer, brand person, whatever, from the hormone guy to the raise your vibration guy. Now, I said this to my wife on the plane and, and dude, this is how crazy this is. We went with another couple. As you were saying that to me, the husband of that couple who I've not, I've not heard from in over a year and a half texted me. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, now this is, I'm gonna tell you this now. They were on the plane sitting next to me. We were on Latin America, Pan, you know, what's it called? L-A-T-M Airlines. And I said to them, Jay Campbell, the, the hormone optimization guy's dead. I'm now Jay Campbell, the raise your vibration. And, you know, my wife is like, oh, great, honey, you know. And, then, and they were like, that's cool, man. If you want to do it, you're in support. And then, of course, when I landed in Los Angeles, and I texted the whole team and they all thought I was crazy that I jumped the shark. Okay, bro, you want to turn your back on 20,000 people? Blah, blah. And I was like, it doesn't matter. They can all fall off. This is more important. It's about raising consciousness. That was literally two weeks before they hit us with what you know, again, whatever the C really is or whatever bioweapon or engineered technology or frequency weaponry or whatever. Was the the plan, which is all of those things. They're, so big, they're big plan, they're big assault. So, so here's how it gets crazier. So I didn't know that. I had my podcast with them in September of 2020, right? Fast forward a year later, we're all now, you know, full scale, you know, ways, ways deep into the debacle of the scamdemic and people wearing the masks and all that nonsense. And so I had them on the show and we started talking about that. And then they told me about that. And then I stayed in touch with them, just texting, you know, they're always asking me if I could, you know, promote their technology and stuff. And I just was like, Hey, I love you guys, but I just, I can't, you know, I have my own stuff I have to do. And I just, I can't get caught up in it, but they literally messaged me in April of 2021. And they said, look, here's where we are now. And in April of 2021, and now remember what was happening in April of 2021, the height of the V administration. Yeah, yeah. Planetary wide. Yeah. The collective frequency, bro, was at 68, which is right below grief. Fascinating. So they moved the entire planet to grief. Yeah. As of April of 2021. And I remember, I, I swear to you, this is insane, but I was in Miami at a medical conference with my wife. And we were in the gym. And if you remember back at this time, this is when people were insane. They were wearing their triple masks and their face shields. And they were obviously conditioned by the media. Dude, some woman started screaming at me in the gym because I wasn't wearing a mask in the gym. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. she was literally like an insane shrieking high like a high, like a demon. It, it probably was. Yeah, but I mean, connection. 
it was un- unbelievable. My wife was watching. My wife walked up to her, you know, because I'm not going to say anything. And my wife was like, lady, shut up. And if you don't shut up, I'm going to make you shut up. And my wife is not really one of those type of people. She's very nonviolent, non-confrontational. I'm insane. I confront, right? But like, I, you know, I didn't say anything because it's like a woman and she's elderly and, you know, just nuts. I mean, she was shrieking like, ah! Yeah. And so when they told me that, like, it was a week later, they texted me about that. I was like, oh, I, I experienced it. Yeah. But so here's the cool thing of, to wrap all this around. We are now, according to them, Back at about 206, which you, as you said, is right over the line of integrity of courage. Yeah. So the planet, again, after all of that, is almost, and I say almost, we're about 40 points away from the matrix ending. So again, if that's true, what is next, bro? They got something else coming. I would say within the next three to five months, this is just my personal opinion. They're going to do something again. And you know, and I know that people like us, it won't affect us. We're already sovereign, empowered, and free. We're walking the path. But the people that are kind of straddling in the middle that are starting to wake up, they're going to have a big decision on their hands. Yeah, that, that, that's an incredible series of points. And I, and I so agree with everything you're saying there. It proved it the same thing to me, by the way. That, that, that's, that's exactly what happened. I won't go into it now because it would be a bit pompous, but like, I, I know what you're talking about and the same thing happened to me down there. But like, do, do, do you know what it's doing, right? When we go into that fear thing, it's putting our shadow material out there um, yep. really, really quickly. And what the evil are doing, and it's this weird thing, you actually need them. Not not desire, not highly desire, not highly useful. We need do. Central need, need, need. Is, 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 is your shadow material and the stuff that you're burying as yep. you climb these different levels, and if you're on the spiritual path, like you should be climbing a lot higher than the ones you were pointing to there from permitting or enabling and stuff like that. Like you should be going a bit higher is you get the shadow material put out there in the form of um, team evil, which is which is antagonistic. And they're there to antagonize you. And then the idea is once you've sorted that thing out inside yourself, that character played by which however many actors you need it to be played by until it's done will disappear forever. You go up a, a thing or sometimes you go down a bit or whatever, and then there's a new one, bang, new character. And and th- their job is to test you on the stuff that you don't have complete about yourself. You get that one, great, uh, bang, next one. And every time you do that, generally speaking, you raise on that uh, David Hawkins chart there, and this is how it works. So so one of the big, because I, I battle with resentment quite a lot. It's one of the things that like I really want to get dialed in and get to zero. But it helped me with resentment so much when I realized, look, man, these th- these people, 100 percent of the time are my own shadow material yeah, exactly. and, and it's not always like oh there's something that i'm actually not doing inside myself often it's not the case often it's like i'm weak in this area and this person's job is to challenge me that's right on this weakness that i have that's right and i need them i must have them because this manifested world is the world of change and if you really want to become a different person that has the boundaries or has the courage or has the integrity or whatever it is it's right down here when when you earth that lightning bolt of of, of the inner planes into, into causality this is where you become someone that does the thing that you aspire to be. So, so maybe that's an important bit of nuance on, on what the other side is doing for us. That's amazing, bro. I mean, look, I always say this, the greatest growth comes from the greatest contrast. I mean, you yeah. cannot evolve and grow as a soul, which is really the only reason that we're even here. Yeah. And, 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 and to have that awareness. And, and again, I know that we all get there, right? You know, again, Hawkins had that great statement which I've, I've literally added to, I should have probably trademarked it before somebody steals it. But you know, he says, everything is happening divinely as it is intended. And yeah. I say, and add to it in all, I'm sorry, as it is intended always and in all ways, you or R or anyone's resistance to that is to that awareness is futile, right? So, but to get there, Richard, which is, you know, obviously clearly where you and I are right now, to get there, one has to defeat the idea that they are a finite being. And yes. the fear of death is what ultimately limits everyone until you overcome the fear of death. And again, overcoming the fear of death is simple when you truly understand that you won't die. Okay. But most people think that physical body death is the end. And no, it's not. It's just the beginning of a new journey or experience or you know, uh, awareness, however you want to perceive it. But religion, especially Abrahamic teachings, even the Eastern teachings... They, 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 they create a 
you know, a false reality. And the false reality is that, you know, this journey isn't the greatest journey and that the greatest journey lies beyond, but you have to be a good soul and you have to make penance and go to first confession, you know, all this stuff to just keep people in this utter absurd, you know, feeling that they're being judged. And bro, honestly, I, to share personal, because I feel so powerful in this amazing conversation is that like my mom is morbidly obese, sick. She just went through COVID. I don't know how she survives. I mean, it's unreal, but I, actually I shouldn't say that. I do know how she survives. She's got a good she, biohacker for a son. That's why. Bro, no, no, no. I wish that my parents don't listen. They think I'm insane, but my, my, my parents are my greatest contrast and challenge and, and, and evolution. But my mom is so fearful of dying and going to, you know, where, right? Because she was raised Catholic and taught all that nonsense that she is literally in a physically suffering, horrific existence. And she's so attached to the body consciousness is all it is. Right. And that after this, it's going to go away, even though her life is absolute misery. Yeah. Yeah. That she can't let go. And so the fear of not letting go to something that she clearly doesn't understand is more intense and more powerful and more resonant. Again, you know, dissonance can become resonance that she literally will not allow herself to like, you know, just be gone and, 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 and again, become an etheric, you know, energy being and go journey somewhere else. And, and, and again, I don't want to say that she's not responsible for this because we're all responsible for the choices we make, but dude, religious teachings. And again, I always like kind of harbor on the Abrahamic stuff really, truly disempower people so much. Okay. It's, yeah, it's sorry. unreal, bro. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user? Maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below the peptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. Well, well like I, I, in very broad strokes, I agree to you, but I think there's a lot of nuance that that should be added to that. Of like, course. Like, like, I mean, for example, like some of the most powerful spiritual stuff that I, I know is like of the Abrahamic tradition. I mean, like if you, if you pack the Gnostics in with that, which oh, I think is that, of course. you know, it's monotheistic and it, you know, like it deals with angels and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> Um, or, or like, you know, stuff to do with like, you know, the invocation of like angels and stuff of course. like that. Yeah. Abrahamic. Yeah. Kabbalah is an Abrahamic thing. But but like there's a lot of nuance, man, because the sort of stuff you're talking about there that's like poisoning. Well, like Western, the Westernization of Catholicism, of Protestantism, of like fundamental Christianity, Pentecostal, Mormonism, all of that, that has been hijacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's the nuance, man. The hijacking is toxic as fuck, and I want nothing to do with it. Right? <laughs> but, 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 like the the master Jesus and like John the Baptist and Simon the, the Christos, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those guys were like the Michael Jordans of this stuff, and, and yeah, like, let's not throw the baby out of the bathwater, man. Like, true, you know? true. It's just so hard though, because you know, as you just said, the hijacking. Look, man, everything you said is 100% accurate. I mean, I'm a very, very profound student of, you know, Theodore Nottingham and understanding the Gnostic teachings and understanding the gospel of Mark and the gospel of Luke and all the real, actual, amazingly, fundamentally, foundationally precepts of spirituality. But again, it's been so hijacked. The Bible has been edited by the king under conscript of the Vatican for centuries. I mean, I tell people this all the time, you know, the, you know, the United States, the land of the free or home of the brave is a scam. Yep. The, 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 19, the 1776 Declaration of Independence, this is a fact. This is provable. This is on Amazon. Anybody can read this. was literally written by the King of England under a conscript of the Vatican. The United States has never been a, a free country. It has been a corporation, again, owned by the Bank of England. It was the military arm of the Vatican. It still is right now. The whole thing going on in the Ukraine and, you know, this dude, I probably just jumped the shark now and we're probably going to get this video banned, but you'll have the private file. <laughs> there is a guy on Twitter right now. If you have not seen this, I will send this to you. It's been in the last three days. It's the most profound tweet thread in the history of Twitter. Clearly, because obviously we know the dark side. I love how you call them the family of evil or whatever. They, what did you call them? What was that term? Team you evil. Used? I love Team that. Evil. 
I'm gonna but they are. That's, that's exactly precisely. I'm going to use that from now on. But dude, so you, we know they control the social media channels and the algorithms, the dark AI. Some people call it the Red Queen. They're leaving this tweet thread on Twitter for the last four days for specific reasons of obviously none of us in third dimensional bodies right now are smart enough to truly understand it. You know, these beings are obviously super intellectual, interdimensional, higher IQ, higher IQ, longer alive than us. Who cares? But at the end of the day, there's information in this that literally proves that the entire Ukraine scam was the United States and the dark guys sending all their bioweapons and putting them down and then funding it all and then making it seem like it's like this you know hege hegemony of Russia versus Ukraine and the United States backing Ukraine. It's all a scam. It's all in this Twitter thread. It, it, it's clear laid out as plain as you can. Nobody can disagree with this. I don't care what your argument is. You, know, you can be brain dead and unconscious and think that it is a war between Russia and the Ukraine that the United States is supporting, or you could read the truth. But at the end of the day, bro, like, the dark side runs the control structures yes. and the control structures that we believe are out there, which again is, you know, Russia and China and the USA and the EU and, you know, the Middle East, it's all made up. Yep. There's, there's families, you know, again, call them, you know, the dynastic or the monarchical or the Illuminati or whatever you want to call them, the Royal bloodlines that, you know, came from this, you know, call them interdimensional, call them fallen angels, whatever you want to call them. And, and they run this planet. And all of this stuff that we're taught in school about, you know, various countries and various economies and all this stuff, that's all a scam. So I mean, at this point, if you don't understand that you're brain dead, that's fine. You can be brain dead. That's part of your evolution, but it doesn't make any more sense. And so it's to me, it's like, what is our purpose now as beings? Our purpose now as beings is to come together, to realize that there is no difference at a soul level. We are all connected through the oversoul of source of God, of creative consciousness, the universal code, whatever you want to call it. And we don't have to keep dealing with this nonsense anymore, but again, it's here. It and, and we're so close right now, Richard, we're so close. Can enough of us, and, and obviously this conversation is part of this, get enough of others who are closer to stop with the differences, to stop being in the victim victimhood frequency, to stop, Pet, petty squabbling over money, over resources, over political ideologies, you know, over just, you know, religions. I mean, all of the divide and conquer duality, linear nonsense. Can yeah. we overcome it? And I think we can, but we, you know, we kind of said that there's already the war and there are sides. It, 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 the question is, is the ones that do overcome it and can we raise it? Do we create a separate alternative timeline reality where there is a new earth that splits off? Yeah, I, I don't know so much about the timelines, though I certainly validate them because people that I very much respect talk about them uh, uh, deeply. But like to, to, your, to your other question, which I think is the real action, like can enough of us do it and can, can the normies wake up in time? Yes, we can. Yes, we are. And yes, they are. Like they are wake, they are waking up and they're doing their own journey through that thing and getting their own shadow material done and that kind of thing. And so the cool thing is, Whilst you wait for them to do it, there is tons of work that you can do on yourself to process your own material, to become more authentic, to become stronger, to find some crappy little um, cabal thing and get rid of that. And there's thousands of them. So you really have to do it one step at a time. For example, some tiny little thing. My laptop was a Windows laptop. Sent it into my tech friend and I've now got um, Linux on there so or Linux. So like I'm now learning how to do that and that kind of thing. And that's one little step you're doing. Or you can do another fast, or you can do this cleanse, or you can do this spiritual thing, or do this psychedelic thing, whatever. Or, or the best one of all, one of the one of the, of all this mystical stuff. And I've been a practicing spiritual guy for a long time. And I've done, done a lot of stuff there. One of the most powerful spiritual maneuvers I've ever done, right, is moralization, which it, which is so weird, but but it, but it gets to the crux of what this thing's about. When you moralize, you, you get to a part of your psyche which is very deep, and there's a law of occultism where the deeper you go into the psyche, the more sort of like um, dominion it has over the, all the preceding stuff, right? Including the manifested world at the end. Now, the, the, we're in an asymmetrical warfare here, right? So the other side, right? They got their weapons that you mentioned, they got big tech, they got all their kings and all that stuff, great. <laughs> cool. You got demons, great, well done. I got demons! Yeah, demons <laughs> and arch demons and the rest of it, right? By the way, bro, when you say that, I want to clarify that just for one second. I want to unpack that. Yes, we are talking about real interdimensional 
paranormal metaphysical demons. Okay, I wanted to clarify that. Continue. Yeah, no, no, definitely. You can, you can. I, mean, I don't necessarily recommend you do this, but you could, you could actually learn how to actually project pretty quickly these days. You yeah. can go in the astral and you can find one. Yeah. But, like, but build yourself out probably a little bit before you, before you do that. The point is, they got all that right, and and some other cool stuff, right? Um, or cool but evil stuff. What they don't have is the overshadowing of the Christ, right. the moralization, the self-esteem, right. which is a That's trail exactly. of psycho-spiritual energy that goes into the, the being, like food comes through the body yeah. and, and into this from the manifest world. This is a psycho-spiritual energy that comes all the way from the highest expression of psyche through the inner planes and into us. We have that. They can't have that. That's right. <laughs> if they had it, They'd be on our side, That's right. you see. So this is part of the asymmetrical warfare that we have. So one of the most potent spiritual maneuver, more profound than doing a lot of this like evocation, astral protection, all that, it's fancy and as cool as that stuff is, and it's interesting and it's worth doing. If you moralize and get that channel of self-esteem, not only will your life grow really quickly, not only will you protect yourself from all this crap, but, you, but you'll like energize yourself and free yourself and then create like a, an example and a precedent and an energetic environment for freedom for other people. Without that thing, without that thing in place, you're doomed to be trapped because you need a psycho-spiritual energy of some type, right? And that's what the other side have to do. Lacking that energy, Jay, they have to get it from a fucking sports car. Right. There's nothing wrong with sports cars. They're fine. But if you prostitute the sports car to get pride, which is, as you know, from, from your David Hawkins stuff, it's, it's, it's a false friend to, to self-esteem, right? Yeah. So yeah. now you've got pride because you're special. Oh, you're pride because you're a good biohacker or a good life coach or something or good spiritual. If you prostitute that stuff to get pride, then, then it can sustain you. But the only people that need to do that are the people that don't, aren't moralized, that don't have that self-esteem, which is why if you look at the, one of the main ways we're being poisoned down here, because we listed loads of them and there's hundreds of thousands, is, is, is they're demoralizing us. Yes. Because without our moralization, and most people can't see it because you need to have gone a step or two into the inner planes to even see this freaking thing. Like, like without the moralization, we don't have that self-esteem, love, um, that psycho-spiritual energy that comes through us. And then the opposite is if enough people of us get that to enough of an extent, the game is done. It's over because the, the, the manifested world doesn't have the psycho-spiritual energy to support that structure, it just there's, there's, it's just dissonance. It will fall apart. The opposite is true. If not enough people have that, then we're doomed for a new version of the Soviet Union or something like that. But I, I don't think that's going to happen. Bro, that was so amazing. I mean, as you saw, as I got really still and I backed up, I literally now am in a place in my life where I can see resonant energy fields. And as you were saying what you were saying, I'm not kidding you. I don't know if you can see this. It's just maybe I'm seeing it. The energy, the etheric coherent harm, harm harmonized resonant energy of yoda and my shaman here in the background the energy of that which is you exactly in physical material form for people that are not where you and i are consciously who watch the show and there are many that's what you were just talking about it, it darkened like the the energy behind yoda you know again by the way i just so you know because i didn't tell you this um i get these from a painter in mexico actually this is from peru and then the yoda is a painter here extremely high energy high vibration guy he does these he literally uh, creates these in like uh mayan ruin caves when he writes these on his boards i'm not kidding he channels that energy but i'm telling you you made such a profound connection to the energy of resonance, to the energy of spirit of source, that I swear the energy, I'm doing the opposite side, you know, because I'm looking at my monitor, but the energy of, you know, that greenish, you know, energy field behind Yoda was getting stronger. Like it was literally vibrating and becoming brighter to me as I, as you were saying what you were saying. And then the same thing with the shaman on, on the other side. I, it was just unbelievable. But I mean, look, everything is energy and frequency. Yes. We are not these physical bodies. We are vibrating atoms, we are. oscillating waves. Of we, we are these physical bodies, but like within the context of a greater whole, which we've lost. So we're, it's, it's illusory, but the body exists. Exactly. We're physical bodies in third dimensional time space, but we're at pure base essence, spiritual energy inhabiting these physical bodies. And you yes, just said it exactly right. It's not even real. 
We've been tempted to create these physical bodies, these material beings. So I push back on that. I suggest that it is real, but like perhaps what you're, what I think you're getting at is like without the context of understanding the rest of the inner planes and the source or anything, right. you led into these illusions, and then and then and then dumb, truly dumb ideas seem like a good idea, you know? Right. Well, yeah. when I say we're not real, uh, metaphorically, physically, materially. This is real. Your body is real. We're having these physical experiences, but at a base essence as spiritual beings, if we were actually not in this dimension of third, you know, whatever you want to call this plane of the third dimension, you know, the plane of demonstration, call it that, right? Yeah. Um, and we were at our base essence as just energy beings, this physical reality would not occur because at a higher frequency, a higher vibration, we would not be able to coalesce into physical matter beings, right? Like even a table, as you know, this, the table itself, the, the material object has a frequency. It is vibrating just as a human being is vibrating. A dog is vibrating. A tree is vibrating. You said something earlier about the energy fields of the earth. The earth is a conscious, breathing, living being itself. And people do not understand this kind of stuff. When I was in Peru in 2019, before that story, and I was literally on Lake Titicaca, one of the seven wonders of the world. I was with a uh, indigenous guide. We did not do any plant, plant ceremonies or anything, but I'm, if we want to go there, I can do that. I've done five MEO five, ten, five times in my life. Love the stuff. It's you know going right into the source frequency. But literally, this was just a, on the lake shoes off in the water with our guide, four of us, my wife and the, that couple I told you about. And he made a ceremony with the Wrigley leaf, which is, you know, the indigenous leaf in the, in the Peruvian uh, Antiplano. And bro, I am not kidding you as God is my witness. And, you know, I would never lie to you. The lake came alive and kissed us at the end of the ceremony. And every single one of us standing in that water spontaneously had tears roll down our face. Now, my friend, the guy that I said, you just texted us, you know, out of the blue a year, I haven't heard from him a year and a half ago, about 20 minutes ago, was not at our conscious frequency. He is now, you know, fast forward four years, it's a massive awakening. And that was the impetus, I think, for him. But dude, he was questioning it. He was like, what just happened? Yeah. yeah. Like it, it had to have rained on us. You know, he was like, you know. Me mechanistic, you know, there's got to be a, there's got to be a material explanation for this because I'm not into this. Like you guys are, his wife was, and me and Monica just knew it, but dude, we experienced it. Yeah. Like that was the first time in my life where I really truly could prove materially, you know, experientially that the lake was alive. Yeah. And it, it came to us and it washed us with like loving grace or tears or whatever it was. And it literally made tears come down our face. And I, and I swear to you, bro, like that was the end of our trip. You know, it was a 13 day deal and that we had one more day or actually we had two more days. We had to fly back to Cusco, but it was so profound that I sat there in the, in the, uh, on the boat ride back to our hotel. And I was, that was when it really changed me. And I was like, okay, the, it's, it's this guy, you know, I've become this guy now. I was always a seeker. Like yeah. you, people like us, you know, we're in the background, we're reading like spiritual books and we're digging into esoteric mysteries and all that stuff. But like, I really truly wasn't brave enough, very honestly, very courageously to tell you this. Now I wasn't brave enough to put this into the, to the, to the, to the ecosphere, to put it into the, the Ethereum. And th that moment was like, you know what? I don't care anymore. People can laugh at me. People can say whatever they want. I have no shame. It's about raising consciousness and this is it. But, but Yes, everything is breathing. I, I mean, the Mesoamerican indigenous, the Incans, the Mayans, all of them, they have a statement. It's called Ani. Even the Japanese say Ani. And it's divine reciprocity. Everything is conscious. Everything is alive. Everything is sentient. Treat everything as you would treat yourself. Yes. Don't litter. You know what I mean? Don't step on bugs. Don't kill life, you know, expediently. I mean, have respect and reverence for all things. And when you get to that level of awareness and you see things for that is, dude, I can't even litter. I remember after that, bro, I do this to this day. I can't even kill bugs. Yeah. I try to capture moths, spiders, like anything and take them out of my house. I, I don't want to kill anything. Like I'm so respective of life. And I wasn't like that before that. Yeah. But, but this is because like you, you, you are now like having more context added to a, 
like a developing thing like that was part of the um sort of satanic structure like the the you know people that have been overtly or covertly inculcated into the satanic worldview right as you broaden it you understand that you're actually a bit more than that and when you see that working a bit not just like theoretically but you can watch it working okay when i do this this happens when i do this this happens and it's it's not just a faith anymore it's a working model and then a practice right then then it makes no sense at all to disrespect people because you're just like well I could, <laughs> but that, but then like, like I could see what it's going to do over here right. and it's really dumb right. because I get, I gain three points and I'd lose 300 right. over here. So right. it's a stupid thing to do. Right. But, but well, this like, is you know, but to that point, Richard, like you, you just hit something that's really good. And we should talk about this because you guys like you and I deal with this. You're going to have haters. Yeah. You're going to have people that are going to dissent. You're going to have people that are going to come at you. They're going to leave comments. They're going to send nasty things. We have a choice as who we are. Just call us conscious, sovereign, empowered, resonant, free humans, sold, connected to our higher self beings to just ignore it and delete it, right? Which is usually the best move I find. Or we can, you know, descend, if you want to call it that, into their dissonant frequency and respond. And as you know, what good is bringing your resonance into their dissonance going to do? Probably okay. not much. Well, the, okay, so let's unpack that because there's a lot of nuance there. I think, not, let's say with like trolls in the, in the thing, like 99 plus percent of the time, maybe 100% of the time, the way you deal with <laughs> trolls is you don't feed the trolls. Um, like, and so I, I'm, I'm unsure whether it's 100% or 99%, but it's one of those. It's 99.5, let's come in the middle. <laughs> you're, you're probably right. Like, I think if they, sometimes when they say something really egregious, like sometimes you get like intelligence agency people, you just see not. Oh yeah, people. bots. Yeah, no, no, AI, dark AI, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but the way they do it is that they're, they're, they're quite sophisticated. They'll say something like that, like agrees one or two points of what you've said <laughs> and then say, oh yeah, and then kill all the Jews or like the niggers are the bad people or something like that. And then sometimes I'm like, look, I want to point out that that's quite egregious and, you know, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> Dude, so, you're awesome, man. I'm like, I'm gonna have to literally my audio, my podcast people are gonna be like, he said kill it. You know what? So I'm like, just strike it, just strike it. But it's true, yeah. they literally they listen to words. No, they there do are specific words that literally automatically it's actually amazing, bro, that you said that that didn't delete it right there. Cause you know they listen to their real time booting in. Yeah, they do. And like I've I've done like bigger, bigger um like ones that I had you know, a little bit of impact during the scandemic and stuff. And then I saw a different type of bot come on that I've never seen before doing these really long arguments for it. And I was like, wow, in all these years of doing it, I've never seen comments like this. And then on this one video, there's this style of comment. Well, well, let me then, ask you something very important, dude. This podcast is unreal. We have covered so much and we're talking about so many things. How many people, people that we think are like very big personalities, I won't mention names, but I know, you know, I could go and mention names, but I don't want, I want this podcast to stay up. How many of them are fake, Richard? Let's be honest. I mean, we know the dark AI is so intelligent. It's so intrusive. It's so react, uh, like figuring things out on the fly. How many personalities that we actually see, big names, aren't even real? I don't know. Like, look, th th this time is so weird. So something <laughs> pretty weird like that could well be true. That's not a rabbit hole I've gone down very deeply. I mean, that, that American football guy that like died suddenly on the field a couple Bro, of weeks. Bro, there are so many. I was going to go there. See, this is how connected you and I are right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I was literally going to bring that up. So you don't even know this about me. I am a huge Cincinnati Bengal fan. I was born in Cincinnati, Ohio. I was watching that game live. I don't watch sports. Was, it, was he a Cincinnati guy? That no, guy no, that he was on that. the other team. Okay. Cincinnati was about to blow them out. This is so crazy that you brought that up, but I, we'll, we'll keep going. Let's not rabbit hole. Um, you and I can talk off air, but well, can I, can I finish the previous point? Yeah, no, 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 please do. I just want to say one thing and then it's all you dude. I'm telling you, it's so weird that you just said that you just see how you just looped me. You just looped me. I'm like, ah. I'm telling you is God is my witness source coming through me right now. I know that some of these people who are large audiences big uh followings they're not even real yeah that's fascinating i i, I can prove it I, i'm telling you i'll talk off air i don't want to i want to keep this podcast up because it's so good but I, I i there's there's friends that i work with you know who i've been telling them this for three years and they're like 
nah, bro, you're nuts. And then it just little by little, they start messaging me until they eventually get there. It's like, you know what, dude, you have to be right. There's no other logical outcome. But anyway, continue. No, no. Well, that's a, that's a really good point because like weirdness is no measure of whether something's real or not in this yes. day and like some weird stuff like that. And I've, I've got yes. no reason to doubt you. So maybe, maybe you should make some videos about that. Like if you've got solid evidence, like bro, you know, if I did, it would instantly be deleted. Well, it stick it on, be deleted. Put it on my channel, like nothing gets deleted there. So. Okay. I mean, I definitely, we'll talk off air. I mean, I'll, I'll give you two people that I'm a hundred percent sure. And how I know this is because like, I have friends that like hobnob, in the circles of these people and no, no one has ever actually met them or seen them in person oh, that's so juicy okay okay we'll talk we'll talk but okay so to, to finish the previous point like like I, what i've learned painfully and this is a big part of my shadow material like over the last few years is like this laissez-faire ultra libertarian modality isn't isn't correct um like it's it's it, it's the default and i think you want to like just let people be as, as a massive default but there comes a point when either you're aggressed against or someone else is being aggressed against and there's something which breaks natural law out there and, and and a level of outrage comes after you've let it pass for a few times and at that point it's not only morally permissible it's morally necess necessitated for you to sort of strike and not only defensively like to, to use a spear not just like a shield and like nail the individual and it's cost me dearly uh, not doing that like to have the discernment and to see it but then not to strike either a, a strike with words or strike with like physical violence and in, in the rare occasion when that's called for um there's a lot of nuance to it and i want to say that like the emphasis is like don't do anything let it be keep good boundaries and all that kind of thing but it's it like just about all morals like it's not 100 percent of the case so when when you see something not necessarily comments but like you see something out there like like your wife was a really good example when when like that dickhead woman was like going yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but that was so that was so just and moral like you needed you or, or better her because she's a woman right to say fuck off if you do that again i'm gonna cave your head in that's, an, that's a profoundly moral act and it would have been so immoral to not do oh, that. i love you man we think so on the same way but it's, it's the truth it's the fucking truth it's you know so and, 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 and the reason is because i think one of the ways they've perverted this this christian message is is, is a misunderstanding this turn the other cheek thing yeah that's not right oh, like, like i said it's all been hijacked yeah it yeah it takes a genius today to truly discern the truth from the highly placed strategic error in all of the spiritual texts. It takes, it takes a moral person. I don't think it's about IQ. I think it's about wisdom. No, I mean, but that's what I mean. I mean, like when I say genius, I don't have anything to do with left brain. It's all right brain. It's all like yeah, heart based I'm awareness. With, it's, it's, it's aware. Let's just call it awareness. You yeah, really yeah. truly have to like read a passage and be able to discern yeah. What is legit and what isn't? Because again, they've hijacked so much. And again, it's purposeful. It's, it's what you said in the, you know, where you made a brilliant point in the very beginning of the show. The point is to evolve through the contrast. Yes. So exactly. if you're going to read something that's been hijacked, well, then this is your learning. This is your experience now. Like, are you going to figure out what is true and what is it? You must have it. Like, like, cause, cause your ignorance creates like a South pole in the inner yes. place, which is a, which is a low resolution thing, but it is true. So there's going to be a, a North pole here in the manifested world. Like they, it has to happen and you're responsible. So go fix it. You know, dude, it's amazing. But look, there's two more points that we really, we've covered so much, but there's two more points in that you brought up, which is escaping the matrix. Yeah. Um, we can talk about the V regret. The only problem is, is we'll just briefly talk about it because, dude, this show is so good and I don't want it to get deleted. And that's like such a target now. But escaping the matrix, and we, let's just let, let's connect both of them. I mean, we talked a lot about personal growth. I mean, you, I want your definition of it, but my definition of personal growth is literally the awareness that you are a spiritual being having a physical body experience for the purposes of evolving and growing your spirit or your soul or both. And when you get to that level of awareness, it's it's like the Nissan commercial, right? Enjoy the ride. Yeah. Why resist the gift of life? Yeah. You know, sure, there's going to be times you can't pay your bills. Sure, you're going to have times where you hate your boss. Sure, you're going to go through divorce. Sure, you're going to have, you know, what times that you would define as negative collapses, debacles, fiascos, whatever. But everything is observational. 
And if you look at things from an experiential point of you know view, uh, you know from a neutral, centered, you know observational place of of, of uh, you know just call it balance, everything helps you, Richard. There's nothing truly negative because again, if you learn and grow from the negative that you've defined negative, because it's not negative, right? You've defined it in this linear duality world of this is good, this is bad, right? Light, dark. But if you just look at it observationally and you say, hmm. Probably don't want to do that again. Probably don't want to experience that again. But wow, such yeah. an amazing thing because look what I could learn from, right? But again, you have to place yourself in the middle, centered, aware that everything is a place of learning or an opportunity for learning and growth. So to me, that is why we're here. But I'm, you know, I'm interested kind of in just, you know, your take is like, what is the ultimate form of spiritual evolution? Well, yeah, I mean, those, those are such good points, Jay. And I, I think you're absolutely right. It, like, and that's what makes the devil such a tragic character because, like, he's not faking it. He, he really wants you to suffer. There's no joke. Yes. <laughs> but, but, like, it seemed from the sort of perspective you're talking about there, like, he can't help but help you, you know. And that makes him so tragic, which is why it's so potent to laugh at the devil or people that are channeling, like Satan Klaus or Kill Gates or Soros or those guys. Kill Gates. <laughs> That's Jeff Bowick's uh, thing, but I think he's spot on. So I, I know Jeff. Yeah, Je Jeff's down here too, bro. He's down in Mexico too. Yeah, I, I may well come visit. I want to get some stem cells. Oh yeah, you could come down anytime. We'll talk off air, but yeah, that would be awesome. I'm there's so many people like us moving here. I mean, the, the, the entire Maya Riviera is all expats from Canada, the states, and Western Europe. That's all it is. We're all living here doing what we do, you know, doing our podcasts or our brands or whatever the stuff that we do. But I mean, almost everyone here is a very high resonant frequency there. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's weird because like it attracts high vibe people. Yeah. You know, yeah. you don't have to go out to a cafe in Playa del Carmen and not find somebody like you to have a conversation with. I mean, it's unreal. I mean, I, I mean, you could never do that in California or in London. No, no way. Yeah, it's, it's difficult, man. Yeah, and like, we'll talk off air maybe, but like, like I, like I've got some something's going on in Mexico, and I think that it's got a major part to play in in the upcoming unfolding of this weird war that we're in. Like, it's definitely it's a, it's a big chess piece. It seems. I, it seems so. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I mean, I was called. I mean, I'm lucky. My wife is. Uh, her mother was born here, yeah. and so she was able to get a dual passport. You know, as simply as sending in a birth certificate, fill out some forms. But, dude, I tell people all the time. The golden rule in Mexico is he who has the gold makes the rules. Yeah. So there's no limitations, right? Like if you know people and you're determined and you're creating a reality of like Mexico is the place to be, there's no hindrances. You can't do that in the United States. As you know, you get pulled over from our car. It's for a cop, you know, because they just suspect that you're speeding or they suspect that you're doing this or that. It's a $1,500 fine and good luck. I mean, there's, there's none of that in Mexico. In Mexico, yeah. if they pull you over... Well, most people like us don't even have cars here because like, what's the purpose? But like, if you do and they pull you over, they just kind of look at you until you give them enough money and they go away. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so much better. Yeah. I mean, think about it. If we had that reality everywhere, I mean, imagine how much better the world would be because then it's like, hey, man, I made a mistake. It's cool. Are we good? You're good. I, I mean, that's kind of how the world works. I mean, all these autocratic rules and, you know, the rule of law and all this nonsense that they've created in the West. It's just, it's failed, bro. It's collapsed. It doesn't work anymore. Yeah. It's collapsed. It's in the process of collapsing. You're right. So, so did you want to talk about solutions of like what people like please. me and you or anyone? Please, please. Yeah. So, yeah. so I mean, like, do you agree that like the, the 5,000 different things between the fasting and the water filters and getting away from the cities and five big and small things? Like, I think that's a gigantic part of this, this effort that we're doing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's one hundred percent. But I mean, how many people? So to that, bro. Of course, I'm living that. I mean, you see me drinking my alkalized. So this is like I literally have electrolytes in here, zero calories, electrolytes. This is a specific spring water that you get in Mexico. Yes, it's in a plastic bottle, and I know that sucks. And they don't have glass. I mean, they actually yeah, do have a lot of glass. They do have a lot of glass here. I just haven't bought it. But this is a very specialized water. But to your point. And this is where the pushback is. And I want your answer to this. The average Joe can't do what you and I are talking about. They don't have the money. They don't have the means, the resources. Or, you know, I know a lot of it is preconceived excuses because anybody can take minimal steps, you know, you know, one step before the other one. But that's their usual pushback. Oh, bro, you moved to Mexico. You can, man. I'm a wage slave. I live in my cubicle. It's all I got. You know, I got to pay for my mortgage and my kids' colleges. You know, you hear all that pushback. 
But it's like, no, you just have limited beliefs. Yeah. You are living a scarcity lack mindset. Yeah. Break free of the mindset and you have skills that you can use and apply anywhere. A million percent. So, so building on that excellent point there, I would, I would say like the same is really true of me, you, everyone listening to this. Like there's a bunch of things that we can fix right now and a bunch of things we're going to have to wait a few years to fix. Same right. as the wage slave, same as me and you. The point is, and, and then to even attempt to fix all of it by the end of the day is, is, is absurd. You can't do it. I can't do it. Jay can't do it. None of you can. But what everyone can do on this whole planet is, is look around you and find something to pick up and clean. Find something that you can make 1% more ordered, 1% more loving, 1% right. less to do with the archontic powers, like those horrible bureaucrats and cops and stuff you were talking about, fucking around with your life. Get ladder out of them. Everyone can do that today. Everyone can fast today. Everyone can like train a little harder today or start training if you haven't. Right. Like pick up a book if you're not inclined to like educate yourself. It's not a soul on this planet, not a soul. Is, is, is not in a position to move that needle 1% more to the good or to the evil. And that really is what it's about. And good and evil isn't just like, oh yeah, one man's freedom fight is another man's terrorist. No, no, that's not what it means. It, it means you look under the hood of the psycho-spiritual substructure of these two classes of people and you find a whole different way of being over here, different circuitry, different rules, different systems, and a whole way of being over here. And what every single one of us can do is ladder into the evil way of being or ladder more into the good way of being. And if you want to be a little more good, then if enough people do that, we have our Renaissance culture. And that's the cool thing. If we get to the other side of this, and hopefully it's not too long now, but if we do, we're going to get a Renaissance culture of music, of film, of art, of all this cool stuff that no one's even invented yet. Probably the UFOs will no longer just be in places like Green Lake and Area. <laughs> They'll be like airliners that just get you from like New York to London in about four minutes or something. Like, and, and on and on and on. There's this renaissance culture that's going to be like the coolest thing ever like to look forward to after this. But even the journey, I think, of, of, of you know, battling evil both within and without is actually quite fun. And, and so so to, to underline that point, there is something every single person on this planet can do. And I've got plenty of weight to lift. Jay's got plenty of weight to lift too. Dude, amazing. Let me put your website up here real quick. Um, we'll talk off air when this ends here in a second. Um, Bro, truly profound show. You know, this is longer than I normally go, but I mean, you and I could go another hour, but I just want to shut it down. I think you and I should do probably regular conversations. <laughs> well, well, we'll talk, man, but like you're very easy to talk to and, and I like your energy and, and I appreciate your wisdom and stuff. So I would like that very much. Yeah, that would be amazing for sure. All right. So guys and gals, uh, always, as, as always, please support the amazing individuals and human beings. Uh, and resonant souls that come on the Jay Campbell podcast, go to his website, richardharriscoaching.com, uh, book a session with him, look into working with him personally. Uh, I would recommend that. And then of course, remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.